Hello, I'm Donald Leggett. Welcome to the latest London Southeast CU interview. Today I'm joined by Chris Gale, and he is the managing director of ASX listed Latin Resources. Latin have a portfolio of interesting lithium projects in Brazil and Argentina. And today we're talking about the 100% owned Salinas Lithium Project located in Minas Gerais State in Brazil, where Latin have several prospective tenements across 6,000 or so hectares. And although it is early days, where the pegmatites potentially increase in thickness at depth. Lithium explorers and developers had a lot of momentum last year, as you know, and as the, as the lithium price soared. And if you want to know what 2023 holds for lithium, this is as good a place to start as any. Hello, Chris. Thanks for joining us from Perth, Australia today, and Happy New Year to you. Thanks, Donald, and Happy New Year to you guys over there in the freezing cold with 38 degrees today in Perth. Uh, don't, don't, Chris. Okay, are you keen to keep the momentum of 2022 going? That would be my starting point. Certainly, that's our aim, Donald. Um, we had a fantastic year last year. Uh, we had our discovery hole drilled in, in March. Uh, we then drilled 15,000 litres to record and publish our uh, first maiden jork resource in December, 13 0.3 million tonnes at 1.2%. So it's a fantastic year, but we're building on that momentum now to really drive the business into 2023. And if you could give us an overview of the Salinas project in Minas Gerais, just give us, give us the holistic overview. What does it consist of? Sure. Um, we started on that project back in late 2019, early 20. COVID hit. Um, we had to pull our guys off the site, got them back in late um, back in October 2020 to finish off the drill targets. As I said earlier, we drilled that project, started drilling in February, put our first assay results out in March, had a significant discovery, some high-grade lithium, and built through there. So um, the, 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 the actual tenements themselves consist of three, uh, Kalina, Kalina West, and Salina South. We've just finished drilling uh, our third resource, Kalina, we're now going to put another four rigs and drill 65,000 metres through the whole of that, that particular three projects. And we will have another, we'll have four rigs on site the next few weeks on Kalina. We believe Kalina could be um, very similar geology, certainly it's shaping up to be the same geology as Kalina. And uh, we'll put a rig down at Salina South as well. So, yeah, very, very good, strong project in the making. Yeah, it's a pretty good return for 10 months worth of drilling. Uh, uh, where uh, uh, do you, uh, Are you excited by this? You know, to what extent is, uh, do you see spodumene uh, pegmatite potential elsewhere, not just on the, the main Kalina deposit? Yeah, and that, that's a great question. Kalina West, you know, it's too early to call, but we've, we've put four holes in there. Hole 33 was brilliant, was 18, 18 million tonnes, 1.3%. That showed us that it's the same geology, same mineralisation as Kalina. So this is five, 500 metres to the west. Uh, we'll, we'll put, as I said earlier, another four, four rigs onto that. In the next few weeks, we're going to drill like crazy. We'll probably put around 15 to 20,000 metres down there immediately and hopefully build that resource up to the same size as Kalina. Kalina is 13.3 million tonnes with an expiration target of 22. So... The goal of the company is to build that resource as big and as quick as we can over the next few months. Well, I was very interested to note that you referenced Sigma Lithium. Now, we're familiar with Sigma Lithium on London Southeast. We've interviewed them a few times. And they're developing what's potentially the world's fourth largest lithium mine, uh, not too far away from you in, in Minas Gerais. So um, what is the geological connection between you and Sigma, as you see it? Um, the geology is very, very similar, uh, almost identical. Sigma's done a fantastic job in Brazil, putting Brazil on the map, the lithium. They started back there four or five years ago. They now have an 85 million tonne resource, of about an average of 1.45%. They've just upgraded their NPV from 5 billion to 15 billion. Um, they've been a, a great company, a great peer type of uh, a company for us to pave the way um, in Minister Ias, uh, in way of environmental, they actually started construction on that project February of last year, 
that construction is now completed and they hope to the commissioning the plant now, they will go into production second quarter of this year. We're in close contact with Sigma. They've helped us immensely with the same consultants. We're actually using the same uh, geological consultants, the same environmental consultants and Sigma. So we believe that we can fast track our project on the back of Sigma, um, as I said earlier, paving the way in Brazil. Okay, and how many million tons of resource would you need in order for you, or indeed someone else, to build a commercially viable lithium mine uh, in Minas Gerais? That's another good question, Donald. Um, we're seeing projects here in Australia, and I mentioned earlier to you offline that Australia reduced, was producing 11% of the world's lithium back in uh, 2015. And although over six years, we're now the largest lithium producer in the world. Um, that's hard rock. No brines, purely hard rock. Sigma's done an excellent job there in um, Brazil. Their resources, initial resource started off at 21 million tonnes, built that to 40, 47 million tonnes, and now they're at 85. Uh, we've got 13, we'll next operation target at 22. Uh, we're drilling cleaner west, so we have to upgrade that resource very quickly. I'm seeing mines here in um, Core Lithium, for example, here in Australia, is 14 million tonnes with an 8 million tonne indicated, they've started construction and started shipping lithium. So it's not, you don't have to be an iron ore type mine. We have billion tonnes. This material is getting currently six to $7,000 a tonne spot price. Iron ore gets, you know, 80 to 100 US dollars a tonne. So you don't need a massive resource to get these for these mines to become viable. Okay, and uh, assuming you do get a viable mine, and it sounds as though you're well well underway, what kind of mine type do you envisage? Is it uh, uh, heap leach, open cast, tell it, or 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 are you are you uh, uh, you're drilling pits? Tell us about that, and what would the end product be? I noticed the Londoners are not too up to speed with lithium. We don't heat bleach lithium, but um, <laughs> I can tell you what's real, been really surprising me and been in markets for 20 odd years that AIM London seems very slow on the uptake with lithium companies. Um, mm. I think there's one or two listed on AIM, which really surprised me over the years. Um, TSX has now got a few. Australia is the preeminent location. Uh, Australian Stock Exchange for Lithium Companies has been. Really, really good. But getting back to your question, um, we just finished our metallurgical test work, our second round. We produced, uh, we had 80% recoveries of ours. You need 6% lithium concentrate to have a premium product. A lot have been sold at five and a half, five, five and a half percent. So that's very good as well. So we finished off our test work and showed us 66 to 7% concentrate and 80% recoveries. That's outstanding which means that we won't need flotation, potentially. We'll only need what's called DMS or dense media separation. So it's a very straight, proven technology of 30 years um, and a very low capex as well. Okay, uh, which is, it takes me perfectly to the, how excited does that make you feel, you know, by the, by the potential for the project you're working on? Can't be too often you get such a good project. Well, oh. The geology, the grade, great. One thing that lithium has in common with a lot of other minerals is grade is king. You need good grade to, to make a good project. And we've got an excellent grade project here. Um, so that's a good start. But we need to build this resource to make this, as you mentioned earlier, Sigma's the fourth largest mine in the world. That's 85 million tonnes. So we're really looking at building this into a substantial mine. Um, we don't get too carried away with ourselves, but we, we're moving towards it. We started our scoping studies, a PAA, a preliminary economic assessment study. We started our environmental studies. We move into our DFS hopefully around June, July, have that completed by December. So we, we're, we're really excited. We're keeping a bit of lid on it, Donald, but, you know, we've got to get the work done in the ground. But that's a, that would be a lot of progress in a short period of time if you can achieve all that in a year, Chris. Yeah, well, we really started this project back in 2019. Um, we got interrupted by COVID, as I said earlier. But the real work started at the beginning of 2022. So within two years, we'll have a resource 
a significant resource in my view, a DFS completed and ready for development. So that's not too bad. That's not too shabby. Uh, and funding, what about funding, Chris? To what extent is your drilling program funded for 2023? Uh, we currently have $25 million in the bank. Um, we're very well funded through through our next drilling program. As I said, we'll have eight weeks on site, 65,000 metres planned for the first half of next year. So we're fully funded through that drilling program, So, which is a great spot to be in, great spot to be in. Uh, you work in the industry, Chris. What's your view on the supply-demand situation for battery-grade lithium of the type that you will be producing? Well, it's quite common knowledge that, that there will be a million-ton deficit by 2025 lithium. Um, the scale on which EVs, electric storage, uh, uh, are rising is, is phenomenal. Um, there's been year-on-year -year growth of 20 to 30% every year. I don't think we've really seen the EV demand we're going to see over the next few years. By the, by, within 10 years, 47 of the world's cars, and this is, this is uh, Ross Cool research, will be electric vehicles. Currently, we have about 3%. So that gives you an indication how much, not just lithium, copper, nickel, um, will be required to turn electrify the world over the next 10 years. So... Um, we're in a very good position of providing, we think, some exceptional raw material into the lithium, into the battery metal space. Okay, final question for you, Chris. Why should UK investors put their hard-earned cash into Latin resources? What's, what, what's your business case? Well, I think if the, if the investors did their own research and had a look at other lithium companies, our market cap currently is about just over $200 million dollars. Um, significantly uh, other lithium companies out there with good resources um, that are significantly higher than ours. So I think if, if your investors did their research and had a look at the value of Latin compared to other lithium companies, you know, as I said, uh, uh, Sigma's market cap's $4 billion, and we're probably two years behind them, I'd, I'd suggest, two years behind them from where they are now. So that... That's all they need to do is look at Sigma, which is 65 kilometres south of us, and look where we are. Follow the Sigma um, pathway, the milestone pathway, uh, when they created their first resource and then moved into their studies, uh, moved into construction. It's, it's an amazing story. Uh, we hear, we understand. Chris, that's a, a, a great pointer. Thank you very much indeed for joining us today from Perth, Australia, Chris. It's, Absolutely fascinating to hear about Latin resources, lithium discoveries in Brazil. Uh, to see more news and strategy-related interviews just like this one, Google London Southeast YouTube and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Meanwhile, have a happy new year to us all from London Southeast. And may all your investments, including your lithium ones, in 2023 prove to be successful. Thank you so much.